Welcome to the All Pro Football Data Show. My name is Jim Coburn, and today's episode talking about the top five best picks in the 2024 NFL draft class based on data. So we're going to be looking at the best draft selection. Stay tuned until the end of the video where we look at who the best players were in terms of their selections. We're also going to have a worst show as well, a worst video, so be sure to check that one out as well. I know I might get a lot of hate for that one. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but uh, we're basing it on data. So what are we basing it on? Well, we're looking at draft approximate value. Draft approximate value is the average or the mean AV or approximate value score of prospects taken at their selection. So, for example, say you had a player at pick 16. Draft approximate value looks at, okay, what was the average production score, NFL production, of a player taken at pick 16. And then that gives you that particular score. Uh, and then, of course, you look at expected approximate value score, which is the data score, if you will. Uh, this one takes a look at athleticism data, production data, age, adjusted production traits like uh, strength of schedule, strength of team, those types of things. Pulls all of their data into one number, physical metrics, arm length, hand size, uh, everything you could think of. Boils all that stuff down into one number um, and gives you the results from there. Uh, and then, of course, we have the average draft value per draft range. You can kind of pause the video to take a look at this. But this is a good chart. So when everybody talks about draft or trade value. You know, everybody talks about that, you know, the trade value chart, um, if you will. You know, the, the Jimmy Johnson uh, is a person who made a draft value chart. But I think it's outdated because the reality of the situation is it's not so much the value of the picks in terms of what you could get. It's what you're average or more, most likely going to get. Because unless you are like an A-plus drafter, you're really not going to get the best value in terms of the picks that you traded for or traded away. Uh, it, and because of that, you have to really realistically, this is like a realistic draft value board. It, it tells you realistically what is expected. If you just randomly picked a player between pick 166 and 170, what would their AV be? What would be their approximate value, you know, in terms of long-term success? So that's what this is. And this is what I graded the players on, is how good their data grade was and how good their draft status was to kind of determine what what's a balanced view of them as a prospect. You know, were they more valuable where they were selected compared to what's usually selected at their selection? And that's essentially what this grading is about. Other thing to look at, limiting factors. So. As with anything in probability and statistics, you're going to have limiting factors. You're going to have things that may affect the results. These are things that might affect it. Uh, the coaching of a team can affect the development or lack of development of a prospect. The, mo the best analogy I usually give folks when it comes to this is when you are planting a tree, you have two ways of doing it. One way is you dig a hole. And you make sure it's the proper depth. You add fresh fertilizer, manure, uh, vitamins and nutrients, different stuff like that. You might put some eggshells in there to give it some calcium. Everything you can think of, right? You wet the soil to make sure it's nice and wet so that when the plant goes in there, it doesn't get shocked from being in a dry environment. Because uh, that definitely can affect plants, um, is if they're put just straight in the dry soil. So you do a lot of stuff to prepare to, to, to give that plant room to grow as a prospect, as a tree, if you will. The other course of action could be you just take the plant, you dump it out on the sidewalk, and then you see what happens. Some teams, that is how they approach their draft picks. They draft them. They 
pick them up, dump them out on the street, and hopefully they grow. Some of them will, some of them won't. But the coaching of a team can affect, can have an effect on a prospect. If, if that player goes to a environment where it's not fertile ground for growth as a prospect, they're going to die. It just, it just is what it is. Uh, then, of course, you have unforeseen injuries can lead to inconsistent outcomes, which is another point. You know, you're going to have players that play really well, and then they get a season-ending injury, and then they retire in football. Uh, you have the publicity of the media market can influence perception of a prospect leading to inflated grades. So one example of this is outlets like uh, the mainstream media, PFF, uh, different pl places like that might pick favorites. They might have a prospect uh, that they like a lot based on their college data. And then when they go to the NFL, they want to keep up the momentum. So they might post things that are favorable in that prospect's light. When in reality, what do they actually do in the football field? A lot of times, nothing. They didn't really do much. They might have flashed a little bit here and there, but that's all people remember is the flashes. They don't remember the actual substance of that, of that prospect. So the media can definitely inflate the perception of a prospect, which can lead to inflated grades, which can lead to inconsistent results. Another unforeseen or limiting factor is psychological and mental makeup can affect NFL outcomes. So mental health is a big, big thing when it comes to prospects. Prospect has an addictive personality that can affect things in lots of negative ways. And it doesn't really matter what that addiction is. I don't have to get into all of them, but any type of addictive personality can affect a prospect in a negative way. Uh, if And I don't have to go down the list of every single prospect like that, but that's definitely something that you should be paying attention to because it can affect their outcomes at the NFL level. And then the last part is substitution bias. So this is the, uh, it's a possibility that coaches switch from higher costing prospects to lower cost, but lower quality. So here's one example of this. Uh, Ricky Purcell, the wide receiver from San Francisco, he was drafted at pick 31. He does fill a need. Uh, he's essentially going to take the Juwan Jennings role away from Juwan J Jennings. At least that's what the depth chart looks like right now. But there is another thing in the back of your mind thinking, okay, they have Debo Samuel. They have Brandon Ayuk. Brandon Ayuk wants to get paid. Debo Samuel probably wants to get paid. They can't pay both of them. They can't. So one of those guys is going to go. So they have to find a replacement. They have to find a guy who can come in and maybe you don't start year one, but maybe by year two, you let the other guy go. And he might be a better option. He might be the better prospect, a better player. But he costs too much. He, you know, he, he's too expensive. You're going to have teams that do that. So that can affect things as well. You might have a prospect that really isn't high quality, but it's cheaper to keep a different prospect and to push that prospect into that role. That definitely can happen as well. So let's get to the list. So number five, and all of the prospects on this list were offensive linemen. And I'm going to get to the reason why at the very end. Uh, but in terms of this pick, uh, his data grade was 97.85 out of 100. His projected AV, which is essentially what the average AV of the prospect selected at his area was was 93.82 out of 100 and then the average av of his pick selected so this is like the da this is essentially the dav score the draft approximate value score uh was 92.28 out of 100 so if you just randomly selected a prospect at that pick you would find a prospect that had a 92.28 score so the overall ceiling or upside to Fuaga would be 97.85 out of 100, which is like a Pro Bowl offensive tackle. Uh, the floor would probably be 93.82 out of 100. And then, of course, most prospects take in there about 92.28 out of 100. So he's pretty much in line with that level of thinking. Good, good player. I think in, in any other draft year, if there wasn't so many quarterbacks being taken, uh, I think he would have been in the top 10, 
Uh, but obviously, all those things happened and pushed him down to here. But I think in any other year, he would have been a top 10 talent, and they got him a pick 14. So that's definitely a very impressive pick. Then, of course, we get to number four, pick 20, and Troy Fontenu, offensive guard from Washington, based on his data grade, he had a 97.27 out of 100. Projected AV is 93.54. Average AV of the pick selected is 90.35 out of 100. Uh, very impressive athleticism traits. I don't really have much else to say is that they they got a top 10 guard based on data at pick 20. That's really impressive. Then, of course, number three, we have Amirius Mims, offensive tackle from Georgia. His data grade was 99.35 out of 100. His projected AV is 94.57 out of 100. And his average AV of the pick selected, or DAV, was 94.59 out of 100. Uh, impressive traits as well. Uh, in many ways, it's kind of like Joe Alt without all the starts that Joe Alt had. Uh, but better athleticism. So great overall pick. Uh, you essentially got a top 10 pick. I pick 18. Stupid impressive in terms of that. Then, of course, we get to number two on this list, which is J.C. Latham, offensive tackle from Alabama. His data grade was 99.61 out of 100. Uh, his projected AV is 96.92 out of 100. His average AV of, of where he was selected is 93.44 out of 100. Uh, very impressive uh, pick here. Um, I, my data had J.C. Latham as the best tackle in this class. The Titans got him at pick seven. Any other draft class, he would have been, say, a top five pick. So very, very impressive pick in terms of him. And then the number one most impressive prospect selected based on data in the 2024 NFL Draft class, Graham Barton, center from Duke. Data grade 99.46 out of 100. Projected AV 94.63 out of 100. His average AV of where he was selected is 89.46 out of 100, which he was picked at pick 26. 26. So, very impressive, very impressive. So, why were there so many offensive linemen in this particular group, if you will? And the reason why is this. Offensive linemen have very high uh, ceilings and very uh, high floors. So, most of the time when it comes to the NFL, guards and tackles and centers, they don't draft prospects early that need a lot of development you know they're not they're not drafting prospects to kind of bet on them long term and there definitely are some examples where they do don't get me wrong but for the most part the nfl hits a lot on offensive linemen uh, they they've kind of figured out that position uh, so any of these prospects i just mentioned because they fell out of the top 10 or the top five in some ways they automatically became the best value because these picks in any other draft year would be that high of value. So it speaks more to the position than it does the other prospects in the draft. So, and, and this has nothing to do with talent um, in terms of, uh, you know, the draft. There, there, are, there are far more talented prospects compared to the offensive linemen. But in terms of value in the first round, these teams got the best value because they got prospects who have high ceilings, low floors, and because of that, you're more likely going to get a stronger prospect compared to other positions that might have lower floors or high ceilings or medium ceilings and low floors, um, essentially. So that is why these are the best picks. Because I know there's going to be a lot of people who are going to go in here and talk about, what about Brock Bowers? Brock Bowers plays tight end. Tight end is probably one of the least uh, approximate value graded positions in the NFL. Um, it's probably one of the least important positions, actually, in terms of data, uh, in terms of approximate value scores. And you are always going to have like a Rob Gronkowski or a different prospect like that every now and again. But for the most part, you're going to get less value out of a tight end compared to getting a wide receiver and also compared to getting an offensive lineman. It just is what it is in terms of that. So with all that stuff out of the way, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, this is the All Pro Football Data Show. My name is Jim Coburn. Uh, this video is going to come up 
stay tuned until we see the top five worst draft prospects. That video is going to be coming up as well. Uh, and we're, I'm going to get into that in terms of the first round. Appreciate everything. Check out my Patreon page, patreon.com slash Jake Coburn. Consider becoming a subscriber. If you like this data stuff, I'm telling you, as soon as the draft is over, we're going to get deep, deep into depth charts, into depth chart data, into kind of determining who's going to be the starter, who's not going to be the starter, um, who is a weak different, you know, prospect uh, that another prospect comes in and maybe takes their spot. All that stuff is going to be strategies, you name it. A lot of stuff is going to be there. So make sure you become a Patreon subscriber. Uh, it's only $3 a month. It's less than a Netflix subscription, and I think it pays off more because you actually learn something from it. So definitely consider doing that. Also, check out my ex, formerly known as Twitter account, at Gemetrics. Uh, follow that to get more insights on the draft there. And as always, like, comment, and subscribe. There's a lot of people that watch my videos but don't subscribe. So if you've been watching these videos consistently, why don't you subscribe? Just do it. Just do it. Lots of content on here, guys, in terms of data. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.